For day three, we're going to bring you one of the most famous shipwrecks on the Queensland coast. That's the RMS Quetta, the Royal Mail Ship Quetta. Um, this wrecked in 1890 in a reef up in the Torres Strait. And Quetta at the time was very famous to the Queensland population. It could often be seen making its way up and down the coast, picking up passengers from Brisbane, Mackay, Townsville, and often taking them all the way out to London and doing a round trip and coming back. Now, unfortunately, it was carrying a full cargo of passengers at the time that it wrecked, and it sank very quickly in three metres when it hit a rock in 1890 in the Torres Strait. 123 people lost their lives, and to give you a bit of perspective, the ship was quite big, it was 120 metres long, so to sink in three minutes is really quite fast. The fame of Quetta comes from a lot of the stories of survivors and the tales of famous people that were on board and died. One of my favourite is of a young girl, Miss Nicklin, who recounts standing on the deck and feeling like the sea was rising and that the ship actually wasn't sinking. And the next thing she remembers is being in the water and clinging onto a dead sheep for about 16 hours until she could see the shore and swim ashore. So we actually don't have many objects from Quetta in our collection here, but this is one of my absolute favourites. This is what's called a binnacle. So it often sat very close to the helmsman on board the ship, and it was used to house some of the most important objects uh, in the helm for navigation. So particularly the binnacle um, cover like this housed a compass. It did sometimes house a um, sandblast for timekeeping and also an oil lamp. Now this would sit on top of a stand that would be about waist height so that as you're steering the ship in front of you, you can easily look down and see which bearing that you're on. Really interesting story about binnacles is they were often secured or this cover was secured with iron nails to the wooden stand and it wasn't until about the late 18th century that they figured out that iron um, was obviously causing issues with the bearing of the compass and giving inaccuracies with readings. So after that, the binnacle was always simply copper alloy affixed with wooden dowels onto a wooden stand.